Hi everyone and welcome to our daily devotions for today, Wednesday the 4th of November. We begin as always with our opening prayer. Let's pray together. Loving God, we bring you our worship, not because we must, but because we may. Not because we have to, but because we really want to. We come not out of duty, but instead out of privilege. Not because it is expected of us, but because you have graciously invited us to respond. Receive our joyful worship and our glad thanksgiving. Receive our love, our faith and our service. For we offer them freely to you, just as you offered yourself freely for us. Through our Lord and our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Genesis chapter 18 The Lord appeared to Abraham near the great trees of Mamre, while he was sitting at the entrance to his tent in the heat of the day. Abraham looked up and saw three men standing nearby. When he saw them, he hurried from the entrance of his tent to meet them and bowed low to the ground. He said, If I have found favor in your eyes, my Lord, do not pass your servant by. Let a little water be brought, and then you may all wash your feet and rest under this tree. Let me get you something to eat, so you can be refreshed, and then go on your way, now that you have come to your servant. Very well, they answered. Do as you say. So Abraham hurried into the tent to Sarah. Quick, he said. Get three seers of the finest flour and knead it and bake some bread. Then he ran to the herd and selected a choice tender calf and gave it to a servant who hurried to prepare it. He then brought some curds and milk and the calf that had been prepared and set these before them. While they ate, he stood near them under a tree. Where is your wife, Sarah? They asked him. There, in the tent, he said. Then one of them said, I will surely return to you about this time next year, and Sarah, your wife, will have a son. Now Sarah was listening at the entrance to the tent, which was behind him. Abraham and Sarah were already very old, and Sarah was past the age of childbearing. So Sarah laughed to herself as she thought, After I'm worn out and my Lord is old, will I now have this pleasure? Then the Lord said to Abraham, Why did Sarah laugh and say, Will I really have a child now that I am old? Is anything too hard for the Lord? I will return to you at the appointed time next year, and Sarah will have a son. Sarah was afraid, so she lied and said, I did not laugh. But he said, Yes, you did laugh. When the men got up to leave, they looked down toward Sodom, and Abraham walked along with them to see them on their way. Then the Lord said, Shall I hide from Abraham what I am about to do? Abraham will surely become a great and powerful nation, and all nations on earth will be blessed through him, for I have chosen him so that he will direct his children and his household after him to keep the way of the Lord by doing what is right and just, so that the Lord will bring about for Abraham what he has promised him. Then the Lord said, The outcry against Sodom and Gomorrah is so great, and their sin so grievous, that I will go down and see if what they have done is as bad as the outcry that has reached me. If not, I will know. The men turned away and went toward Sodom, but Abraham remained standing before the Lord. Then Abraham approached him and said, Will you sweep away the righteous with the wicked? What if there are fifty righteous people in the city? Will you really sweep it away and not spare the place for the sake of the fifty righteous people in it? 
Far be it from you to do such a thing, to kill the righteous with the wicked, treating the righteous and the wicked alike? Far be it from you. Will not the judge of all the earth do right? The Lord said, If I find fifty righteous people in the city of Sodom, I will spare the whole place for their sake. Then Abraham spoke up again. Now that I have been so bold as to speak to the Lord, though I am nothing but dust and ashes, what if the number of the righteous is five less than fifty? Will you destroy the whole city for lack of five people? If I find forty-five there, he said, I will not destroy it. Once again he spoke to him, What if only forty are found there? He said, For the sake of forty I will not do it. Then he said, May the Lord not be angry, but let me speak. What if only thirty can be found there? He answered, I will not do it if I find thirty there. Abraham said, oh, Now that I have been so bold as to speak to the Lord, what if only twenty can be found there? He said, For the sake of twenty I will not destroy it. Then he said, May the Lord not be angry, but let me speak just once more. What if only ten can be found there? He answered, For the sake of ten, I will not destroy it. When the Lord had finished speaking with Abraham, he left, and Abraham returned home. Psalm 16 Keep me safe, my God, for in you I take refuge. I say to the Lord, You are my Lord. Apart from you I have no good thing. I say of the holy people who are in the land, They are the noble ones in whom is all my delight. Those who run after other gods will suffer more and more. I will not pour out libations of blood to such gods or take up their names on my lips. Lord, you alone are my portion and my cup. You make my lot secure. The boundary lines have fallen for me in pleasant places. Surely I have a delightful inheritance. I will praise the Lord who counsels me. Even at night my heart instructs me. I keep my eyes always on the Lord. With him at my right hand I will not be shaken. Therefore my heart is glad and my tongue rejoices. My body also will rest secure. 
because you will not abandon me to the realm of the dead, nor will you let your faithful one see decay. You make known to me the path of life. You will fill me with joy in your presence, with eternal pleasures at your right hand. We come now to our closing prayer. Let's pray together. Loving God, there are some things in our past that we would rather forget, but that return to haunt us. Our foolish actions, our hasty words, our evil thoughts, the opportunities that we have wasted, things that we really should have done, but we did not, or things that we should not have done, but we did nonetheless. We find it hard to forgive ourselves, harder still to think that others can do so, and hardest of all to believe that you can ever forgive us. And yet, though we may condemn ourselves and others may do the same, you repeatedly show us how you are able to change lives, not just forgiving past mistakes, but also making people new renewing them from within through the power of your Holy Spirit. Help us then to bring all the feelings of guilt and shame that hold us down and to open our lives to your renewing touch in Jesus Christ our Lord. For we ask this in his holy name. Amen.